Welcome to room four at Pallant House Gallery, which we've recently rehung to celebrate our 40th anniversary. Today, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about this work that's directly behind me by the artist Graham Sutherland. Graham Sutherland was born on the 24th of August 1903, and he was a leading figure in modern British art and very much a leading force behind neo-romanticism or neo-romantic art. Sutherland was an official war artist and he documented several towns and cities in England and in France um, and really showed the destruction of the Second World War on these places, including places like Swansea, the East End of London and also Normandy. And it was during these documented periods that he had that he really saw the devastation of people's ordinary lives and real human suffering. And this set him up well for his later portraits and the religious subjects that he would take on slightly later in his career. In 1944, Graham Sutherland was commissioned by Walter Hussey, who was the vicar of St. Matthew's Church in Northampton, to produce a religious work. And Walter Hussey actually became the Dean of Chichester Cathedral slightly later on, and he was also the man who was responsible for our founding collection at Pallant House Gallery. So Hussey commissioned Sutherland to produce a religious work, and he was very keen for him to paint the Agony in the Garden, which is a biblical scene which shows um, the moments leading up to when Christ was arrested in the Bible, which just um, was before his crucifixion. And Sutherland didn't really want to paint this work. He wanted to do something slightly different. Instead, he wanted to take on a monumental subject of the crucifixion. And he chose this work because he had recently seen photographs of the Holocaust survivors, the individuals who had been kept in concentration camps such as Auschwitz and Belsen, who had been liberated in 1945. And he'd been so horrified by the treatment of these individual people that he wanted to express this in his own work. He later said that he found the story of Christ being crucified much more real to him and much more realistic after seeing the photographs of people in these concentration camps. Sutherland depicts Christ in this work right in the center and he's shown with his, ha his hands held up high, his arms outstretched with blood pouring from his hands. You can see the strain in his arms as he's trying to hold himself up and yet his head is lulling down and the crown of thorns is sort of piercing his head. It's quite a strange colour that Graham Sutherland has picked for this work. He's picked the green in the background, but you can see slight shades of green in the body as well, which gives it this very cool colour. And the black and white that he's used for the main um, part of Christ's body, again, harks back or recalls those photographs of Holocaust victims. You can see here the, the cloth around his waist, and it gives him the, the appearance of having these two very, very slim legs that are you know just flesh and bone there's no muscle on those legs at all and again it looks back at those photographs that he would have seen and that he would have been so horrified by you can see the shadow here underneath the underneath the ribs this very emaciated figure and it really shows the vulnerability of the human form here you can really see the pain and suffering of christ just as you would have in the photographs that inspired graham sutherland I think what's particularly poignant about this work is that Sutherland decides to show Christ, like any one of us, with a fragile body, he's human, he's somebody who could really undergo suffering like any one of us. And that's what makes this work so powerful. It makes it relevant to a contemporary audience of the 1940s. And I think it has a lot of relevance to today. This work is currently on display in room four of Pallant House Gallery, which was rehung to celebrate our 40th anniversary. And it's on display alongside two other works by Graham Sutherland, including a portrait of Walter Hussey.